Hey everybody. Being that this video is just a basic ride along to show a casual, family friendly, three hour trail, I'd like to take a moment to give you just a little background on these videos. Let's see what's up down here. When we were inspired by a Glacier National Park video we saw, my wife Sam and I immediately started talking about a big vacation out west. We wanted to hit Glacier National Park. And then after that, we were going to head on up to Banff in Canada. After COVID came, we had to put off our trip another year. So with all the time on my hands, I'm, I'm guilty. I inevitably got more ambitious with the trip. And we changed things up, including removing Banff because Canada was essentially closed. We really hit a lot of places and probably, in retrospect, hit too many. We went to the Badlands, the Black Hills, Bighorn National Forest, the Absorca Mountain Range where I wanted to hit a trail there, the north side of Yellowstone, Glacier National Park, the Whitefish Range, and then west over to Eureka, Montana. Then we went south to the Magruder Corridor, then meandered over to the area west of Yellowstone to get ready for hitting the west and south side of Yellowstone the following day. Next up, we went to Jackson, Wyoming, then southeast to Lander, Wyoming, Next, to the southern end of the Wind River Range, where we were going to hit some trails. Onward southeast of the Wind River Range, through the desert BLM lands, to Medicine Bow National Forest in Wyoming. Then we made our way down to Rocky Mountain National Park. Wow, <laughs> it's a lot to say, isn't it? It's pretty ambitious for three weeks, and especially to do it with two teenagers and an infant in tow, along with the usual family difficulties that you guys are familiar with. Being crammed in two Jeeps instead of one helped a little bit, but we still had our moments. All right, a little mud on the left. Just keep going. Keep going. All right. Prepping for the trip, I acquired a lot of basic camping gear and an extensive vehicle recovery kit. I also gave the Sahara more off-road capability, as you can see in my earlier first mod video. It's got a few less obvious mods, but we'll get into that later. So what do you want to do? Turn around? Because of that ambitious schedule, there were a lot of things that we missed in the Black Hills and surrounding area. In addition to exploring the vast trail system, I want to go back and visit these places of interest. Number six, about 20 miles east of Wall, South Dakota is the Highway 240 exit off of I-90. Just go north instead of going toward interior and immediately to the left, you'll see the Minuteman Missile Silo. Deactivated in 91, you can go inside and get a glimpse of working as a two-man crew in a Cold War era facility with 80s decor. Number five, while you're in the area, if you're looking for some place to ride your dirt bikes, four-wheelers, side-by-side, -side, or Jeep, head to the Baja OHB area about five miles west of Interior off of Highway 240. I only found out about this recently. I went north from Interior along the scenic route and missed this stop. Watch out for mud though, I heard it can suck your vehicle in pretty quick out there. We're as far as we can go because of that down tree over there. Let's go ahead and turn around right here. It's a pretty spot. I'm gonna get around you. Number four, it sounds like Wall Drug is worth a stop. It too is off I-90 and east of Rapid City. Establishing itself in 1931 as a highway respite, they provide dining, activities, souvenirs, and visitor information. Being one of the most popular attractions in South Dakota, it attracts more than two million travelers every year. Number three, known for its gold rush and wild west reputation, 
Deadwood at the northern edge of the Black Hills has lots of attractions for an afternoon stop. There's Wild West street shows, guided tours, an amusement park, indoor water park, a casino, and bars. If you're looking for scenic drives, number two. Also in the north of the Black Hills, there's the Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway. I really neglected to see the north, so I'll have to check this out on a return visit. And number one. Grouping a few highways together, the Peter Norbeck Scenic Byway is a beautiful drive through some of the best views the Black Hills have to offer. I didn't get to see it all, but the Needles Highway is a must-see. Try to go when it's not so busy, though. There's not many places to pull off to take it all in, especially when it's crowded. Oh, and there's some outstanding hiking there, too. Couldn't go any better. There you go, good girl. Good job. Oh, what's up here? There's a sign. There's a hiking trail there. to the outside of the turn, not the inside. Inside, correct. Still in four high. Just to help out a little bit. Engine braking as well. Some people might not realize that. It can help in um, distributing the braking force. Hello. Hey. Hey, so we're on the tarmac here in Chicago and they just came on and said that there's an engine light that's coming on and we have to go back to the gate so maintenance can look at it. It's going to be at least a 30 minute delay, if not more. So I'll keep you updated, but we haven't even taken off out of Chicago yet. Really? Okay. So a longer, a two hour flight just turned into a three hour flight. Sorry, babe. All oh. right. Uh, I was sitting here doing this uh, easier trail, but it's fun. It's... Okay. 
So, well, I'll let you know when I get there. I, I may just, I may just take an Uber to the hotel and just meet you there, depending on what time I get there. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Wasn't sure I'd get reception. Enough to get the phone call, but I didn't know if it'd be enough to maintain the phone call. The Black Hills are an isolated and eroded mountain range that stretches from southwest South Dakota to northeast Wyoming, mostly lying in the Black Hills National Forest. These old mountains, some as old as 3 billion years, rise above the plains about 3,000 feet, and Black Elk Peak, the highest point east of the Rocky Mountains, reaches 7,242 feet. As to native written history, that begins with the Sioux from Minnesota driving out the native Arikara tribes in the 1700s. But the Arikara had only lived there since the 1500s. So who were the OG inhabitants? Well, if you go back 11,500 years, archaeologists believe that the Clovis culture, based on their distinctive bone and ivory tools, were not only the first humans in the Black Hills region, but for much of North America. There are some sites, though, that have some people thinking whether that's true or not but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. More recently, the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868 established the Great Sioux Reservation west of the Missouri River and acknowledged indigenous control over the Black Hills. It was supposed to forever protect the Black Hills from European-American settlement. What happened, you may ask? George Armstrong Custer. He led an expedition in 1874 to the Black Hills to find suitable fort locations a route to the southwest, and the possibility of gold mining. And they found traces of gold in French Creek, right here in this pic. This is near modern-day Custer, South Dakota. Word spread quickly and led to the Black Hills Gold Rush, where prospectors and miners flooded the region despite it being Sioux lands, which ultimately culminated in the Battle of Little Bighorn, Armstrong's death there, and the U.S. government forcing the Sioux to relinquish their treaty rights to the Black Hills. In 1980, the Supreme Court found that the United States broke the treaty with the Sioux Nation, initially awarding them $106 million. But the nation still refuses to accept the money that is now $1.2 billion due to interest, instead wanting the Black Hills returned to them. I want to take a second and acknowledge that if it seems like I went on this three-week vacation without working on my videography skills before I left, you would be correct. 
So bear with me and thanks for watching.